look at example number 12. How many ways can three distinct, there's a key, we have three different math books, so that means they must have different titles. One's algebra, one's calculus, one's trig or something. And we have five distinct chemistry books be placed on the shelf if the order of these books does not matter. Okay, so how I think about this is pretend I have my three math books and my five chemistry books and they're all sitting on the floor just jumbled up. And since order doesn't matter, then all I'm going to do is you can close your eyes. Let's say close your eyes you're going to reach down and pick up a book. How many options do you have for that first book? Well, you have eight different options. So you have three math and five this five uh, chemistry books, but they're all jumbled up and you have your eyes closed, but you have eye, you have eight options to pick up that first book. You've picked it up, you're holding it. You're going to reach back down and pick up another book. How many options next? Well, you have seven, and then six, and then five, four, three, two, and one. Or, writing this out, it's just eight factorial. Okay? Let's go to part B. You know for a fact now that the math books have to be kept together as a group. Okay. So, again, think of them all kind of on the floor. I'm going to go to, but there's an area that has just the math books on them. When I go to pick up my first math book, how many math books can I choose from? Well, you have three options for that first math book. I've picked it up. I'm going to go back down and get another math book. There's two options left, and then one option left. Okay, so I've got all these math books in my hand, but now I'm going to go back and try to get all these different chemistry books. And in this part B, all it says is all I have to worry about is just picking up my math books. Okay, so let me write this out more thinking that like this. Is there are three factorial ways of ordering the math books. And now think of all the math books as one big unit. You put them in a Walmart bag, okay? They're all together. We knew that there were three factorial or six ways that I could have picked up those books in many different orders, okay? But now they're in a Walmart bag. And think about it now. Let's go to the floor. What's on the floor is all jumbled up are the five chemistry books and the one bag of math books. Okay, I'm going to treat the one bag of math books as one thing now. So when I go to the floor to pick something up, I could pick up any one of the five chemistry books or the bag of math books, right? So there are technically six options that I can choose from when I'm going to the floor now. I could pick up the five chemistry books or that one bag of math books. I've picked it up, I've put it on the shelf. Now I go back down. I could, if it wasn't the math bag, then I could pick up any one of the four chemistry books or the math bag. So I have five. And what we're going to see is then it goes down, all the way down to where you pick up the last thing, one option. So together, to answer this question, the total number of ways that you can, I guess, rearrange uh, the three math books and the five chemistry books on a shelf is that there are six factorial ways of ranging both the math books with the chemistry books but then the three chemistry books or I'm sorry the three math books have to be among themselves so there is the final answer for that the three factorial to arrange the math books among themselves the six factorial to rearrange the math group in amongst the chemistry group. Okay? All right, now let's see if we can get to this next one. Maybe by the time we do this one, it'll kind of make a little more sense. But, okay, we want to keep the math together with their own group, and the chemistry want to be kept together as their own group. Okay, so in the math as their own group, we decided that was three factorial. So if I have three books, I have three options to pick up the first book, then the second book, and then the first book, or the other book. If I go to the chemistry, there's five. So if they're all on the floor, I've got five factorial ways I can pick them up. Five for the first, then four, then three, then two, then one. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the book. Let's think about this together. I'm going to go to the bookshelf. I have how many ways can I then put these books up there? Well, if the math have to be kept together as a group and the chemistry can be kept together as a group, then I really, from there, I could either do the math first, then the chemistry, or I could do the chemistry, 
as a group up there on the shelf, and then the math. So really I have two options on how to put the groups up on the shelf. Okay, so here's my overall answer then for this. I have three factorial ways of rearranging the math among themselves, five factorial ways of rearranging the chemistry among themselves, and then just times two ways of putting them up on the shelf. Either the math, then the chemistry, then the chemistry, then the math. And there's the answer for that one. Okay, let's go to the next idea. We want to select our objects from n total distinguishable. Alright, so we're talking about distinguishable things here. We can tell everything apart. And then we want to find the number of ways those our objects can be arranged, but this time order doesn't matter. This is what a combination is. Okay. The difference between the main difference between a combination and a permutation, everything we've done so far is a permutation, and in a permutation order matters. Meaning if there are five of you guys, and let's say the first person I select wins a hundred dollars and the second one wins fifty, obviously it matters the way I select you because the first one's gonna get a better prize. Or think about a race. If there's eight people in a race, they're running around a track, and whoever wins first obviously is getting the gold medal, then second's the silver, and third's the bronze. So it matters how you cross. So like a permutation of eight take three, eight objects taken three at a time will tell you how those people can place one, two, and three. When order matters, it's all about permutation. If order doesn't matter, it's combination. Let's say you want to go and go to the ice cream shop and you want three scoops of a flavor. You really don't care. You just want any three scoops, any three flavors out of the 20 that they have. That's going to be a combination. It doesn't matter how they scoop it in your bowl or put it on your cone. You just want to get your three flavors. Okay? And that's going to be a combination. And in our calculator, when we looked at that probability, the, we hit math and went over to PRB, that was the one right below. It said NCR. That's standing for combination. And here's your formula. If you choose to do it by hand, look, if I wrote the permutation formula, the permutation of n objects taken r at a time is n factorial over n minus r factorial. So look, they're identical in that, that part and that part. The only difference is that in the combination has this little extra r factorial in the bottom. So watch out for that if you choose to do your things by hand. Okay? All right, let's go to example this first one on permit on the combinations and see about the difference. How many two-letter combinations can be made from A, B, C, and D? Well, we're going to be taking out of four objects, the A, B, C, and D, we're going to be grouping just two at a time. Okay, so if I choose to do the formula, a combination of four take two is four factorial divided by two factorial, four minus two factorial. So it's 4 factorial over 2 factorial times 2 factorial. Well, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 times 1 times 2 times 1. So that goes with that. That goes with that. Ah, remember when we were done, when we did this problem just before, the answer was 12. Well, look, we shrink it even more. The answer here is just 2 times 3. It's 6. It's only half as much. Don't always assume that. That's not always the connection between the two. It just happened to be in this case that it was just half as much. Or if we choose to use our calculator instead and pull that out, what you're going to do in the home screen is type your grand total first, the 4, then hit math, and go over to PRB, and then go down to the NCR. Make sure that's highlighted and hit enter. And on your home screen, it'll show you that so far. Then type in the number 2, hit enter, and it's going to come out with 6. So what this is telling you is that there are six different combinations of rearranging A, B, C, and D when you're picking just two letters at a time. Okay. Well, let's get some more practice with combinations. And honestly, if it doesn't say order matters, I should say 90% of the time you're going to be doing combinations. They're way more popular than permutations. If it ever talks in a problem about winning a race or declaring a president, a treasurer, and a vice president, like specific positions or 
uh, like I said, winning a race or winning a certain amount of money or something like that, that's when you're going to use the permutation. If it doesn't specify something specific like that, always think, okay, when in doubt, go combinations, okay? Like here in example 14, how many ways can a club of 30 members select three people? Well, in general, remember we did this problem just a second ago, but right before how it said, how many ways can a club of 30 members select a president, a vice president, and a treasurer, since they were very specific, the first person selected was going to be the president, the second was going to be the vice president, and the third was going to be a treasurer. Since it order mattered there, we had to do a permutation. But here, since order doesn't matter, just out of those 30, we just want to pick any three to say, hey, you can represent us, we really don't care, then it's going to be just a combination. So it's going to be 30 NCR take three if we choose to use our calculator. Okay. So if we plug that in real quick, we'll get a total answer of 4,060. There's 4,060 ways of me just picking any three of you guys to go, let's say, out of the whole class to be able to go and represent us. And if I choose to use the formula, sorry about that, the thing just moved real quick. If I choose to use the formula, then it's going to be 30 factorial over 3 factorial, 30 minus 3 factorial. Or, like I did before, 30 times 29 times 28 times 27. I'm going to stop right there, though, because down here in the bottom, I'll have 3 factorial times 27 factorial. And this is going to take care of everything going from 27 down to 1. And then 3 factorial, if we write that out, let me erase that and actually write that out. 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1. So I can cancel, let's say, the... 3 into the 30 leaves me with 10, and I can even go 2 into the 10 and leave me with 5. So 5 times 29 times 28, if I did this by hand, you'll get also 4,060. So a lot fewer options when you go with a combination. It keeps everything lower down, and the reason why is because that's that extra, inf or that extra R factorial in the denominator when you're looking at that main formula. All right. Example 15. In a certain tournament, we have nine teams total, and they have to play each other once. So how many games are going to be played? Well, I've got a total of, N t or of nine teams. That's what my N's going to be. But what's my R going to be? What are these groups? Well, when you have a team play another team, how many teams play each other at one time? Only two teams? So that's what R is going to be, is two. Because uh, you never have three teams playing on the field at one time or on the court at one time. It's always just pairing them up. So we were looking for groups of two here. So and it doesn't really matter, you know, what team is selected over the other. They eventually all have to play each other. So if it mattered, the first team selected maybe had a higher advantage, then it would probably be a permutation. But since it doesn't, you're just going down the line and saying, hey, team A, team B, we're playing, let's go. It, it says that order doesn't matter when you select them, then we're going to go combination. So this will be 9 NCR take 2. And if we want to plug that in our calculator real quick, what's going to come out is 36. So there's 36 ways that 9 teams can play each other exactly once.